We're coming to the end of our study through the Sermon on the Mount. And sadly, in this setting, we haven't had time to cover everything. There's so much more to dig into, and this is just one of Yeshua's sermons. But if we could summarize these concepts into one verse, it would be this. In all things, do to others what you would want them to do to you. For this is the Torah and the Prophets. This is known in our culture as the Golden Rule, or in Judaism, it shows up first in Leviticus and is known as the Ve'ahavta prayer. Everyone loves to quote this phrase, but putting it to practice is tough. Yeshua seems to confirm the difficulty of following this way as he encourages us to enter through the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and those who enter through it are many. How narrow is the gate and difficult the way that leads to life, and those who find it are few. The bar Yeshua sets is pretty high, and if it was just us walking through that way alone, it would be impossible. But God has sent us His Holy Spirit to help us walk this path, and it's God who will keep you from slipping. And we need God's discernment to know the right way to go, especially with all the deception circulating in our culture today. Yeshua continues to warn us, watch out for false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Some of the most dangerous people are the ones who look like they have it all together, but inside are full of lusts and selfish motivations. Throughout history, men have used the word of God in an evil way for their own gain and agendas. Even in Genesis, the serpent twisted God's word and brought on the fall of man. So how do we check for the truth? In the book of Acts, we see the Jews in Berea received the apostle Paul's teaching with eagerness, but checked through the scriptures each day to see if what Paul was saying was true. For this effort, they were called noble. They wanted truth and were diligent to search out the full counsel of the scriptures to make sure what was taught lined up with the truth. But sometimes it's not just as easy as a Bible search. How can we know the difference between the truth and distortion? Yeshua tells us in verse 16, you will know them by their fruits. Finally, we have a healthy choice in the area, right? Sure. I mean, what is this? Does it even matter? It's farm raised. Grass-fed. Organic. Is that a half-eaten apple? Exactly! You know what? I would really like to see the kitchen. To inhale all this health, right? <sighs> yeah, it smells so bad. Me and you, let's go to talk to the chef. <sighs> Hi. Hi, ex excuse me? Hi. We were wondering, is uh, the food here, is it... Uh... It's organic. <laughs> yeah, but still, do you guys check the products before you... Whoa. Are you okay? <laughs> it's organic. Sweetie, are you okay? Never been better. My body is just going through a detox from all the bad food I used to consume. <laughs> I, I really don't think this is the reason why you're feeling like that. I gotta tell you, I'm not sure this is doing you good. But it's organic. It's organic. Yes, we established that, thank you. I'm fine. I can feel my system being cleansed. My hearing is sharper. My breathing is smoother. My eyesight is... Quick, is there first aid kit over here? Don't, don't, but, don't, but, don't say it. It's organic. The sign may say organic, but it doesn't mean it's healthy. Our world is full of moral relativism, which means roughly that truth is in the eye of the observer. But this flies against the face of logic and the word of God. The label doesn't make the food healthy, what the food consists of makes it healthy. So for us and for people and teachers around us, ask yourself, what's the fruit? 
Are people growing in love and holiness? Are they following the scriptures in the way they live their life? So how do we bear good fruit? Like any plant, we can only be fruitful if we are planted in a good source. Yeshua goes further in this illustration in John 15 when he says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he trims so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I will abide in you. The branch cannot itself produce fruit unless it abides on the vine. Likewise, you cannot produce fruit unless you abide in me. The first part is that we can only bear fruit when we're connected into relationship with Yeshua. He's the life and the fuel for all the good we do. And God has chosen to reveal himself to you. His goal is that you would be fruitful in every area of your life, your relationships, your work, every aspect of your life. But it doesn't mean you'll be without hardships. Doing well means you'll be pruned. Some parts of your life are dead and sucking the good away from the rest of the body. Yeshua says that he disciplines those who he loves. Just like any good gardener, our Father in heaven prunes away those parts and even parts that may seem good to bring you to your best potential in Yeshua. God's pruning in your life may be painful at times, but it will lead you to a much richer and fuller life. So what if we're not bearing good fruit? What if our fruit is bitterness and self-centered lust, pain and vanity? Yeshua says, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruits. The idea is a tree that is not producing good fruit is referring to those who are under the punishment of sin, which leads to death. In Luke 13, Yeshua tells the story of a man who had a fig tree for three years without it producing fruit. And his servant then convinced him to give it one more year to aerate the soil and fertilize it. And if it still didn't bear fruit, then he would cut it down. God is merciful and he doesn't want anyone to perish, but he won't force himself on anyone. If we persist to live a life that continues to reject God and his Messiah, then we have made that decision to separate our life from his. And that separation from the source of life will lead to our death. 